Welcome to the Voice of Africa TV. Today we have a very, very, very special guest with us. He goes by the name of Paul the Prince. He is a Zambian-born musician, TV presenter, and radio and DJ as well. Hello, Paul. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. I, apart from the fact that you have a man New Jersey, yeah, but imagine and you were in Liverpool. Oh my yeah. gosh, I was surprised when I saw the, the meeting screen going. I'm like, what? Jurgen Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, yeah. talk about your childhood growing up? Uh, man, my childhood was fun, man. I think I grew up in a music-loving family, most like most musicians anyway. The difference is I didn't really sing in church. I just used to listen to lots of music, um, lots of influence from the likes of Boys to Men, Asher, you know, uh, uh, I think pretty much any R&B artist. So growing up, I always had the interest of, you know, getting into singing. But I also loved IT as well, and my mom used to be in media. So I was well-versed in all three sides of what I liked, yeah. No, very interesting, for sure. So do you have any, like, specific memories of your childhood that I think, you know, maybe shaped you to the way you are, you know, today? Yeah, I think um, 2007, I went for a singing competition. My friends pushed me and said, no, you got some nice vocals, man. So I went to do a Chris Brown record at the time. I think it was Run It. And that's the time my dad actually came for a final, you know. And it was so good to have my family supporting me there. And that showed me that, you know what, no matter what I do, in the long run, at least my dad is going to be supportive. Right. So I ended up coming as a runner-up. You know, I got second place. Um, but then on things changed because the same TV station that had the singing competition had me do the International Children's Day of Broadcasting at the time. Wow. So I started presenting kids' shows with them, and that's how my presenting career started. So it was music and presenting simultaneously. I got to work with some of the best artists and producers at the time in Zambia. You know, like Slab D is very big now. I've got a song I'm not released with him yet you know, the likes of Daxon from Africa and Zambia. Um, and I've worked with radio legends who helped me get into the game as well. In Zambia, like K-Smash. Um, I'll never forget him. And my internship was also done at Rock FM in Osaka. So, you know, I, I, that's why I started building my, my, my brand and solidifying my career. You know, so my childhood really started in, I think that moment when I said yes to go for a singing competition is when everything changed for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely very interesting that you touched on that as well. You know, are there any specific role models that you had, you know, after, you know, you realized that this is exactly what I want to do? Like, who were you looking up to? Oh, you know, um, for the music, at least I've covered the likes of Usher. I'm a big Usher fan, um, a big Neo fan, Chris Brown, Trey Songs. But when it comes to, like, presenting and, and TV and all those aspects, I think uh, there's it's so many people I've been watching online, the likes of Trevor Noah, you know. You know, he started off as a comedian and now look at where he is. I'm always inspired by his work. You know, um, I think I'm inspired by pretty much anybody who's, who's kept a platform going. You know, people who've managed to show their, their skill, even on the biggest stage. If I look in South Africa now, there's the likes of Bonang, you know, um, from South Africa. You got the likes of Mini Dlamini, who I happened to work with as well a few years ago from Supersport. I mean, I've, I've just been blessed to meet some of the people I look, for, I look up to, rather. And... Um, I have so many. I wish I could pick one. But I think I would say every single person who's out there doing their thing and doing it so well inspires me to go out there and do the same. Yeah. Uh, I definitely agree with you. So how do you, how do you juggle everything together, man? Because, like, you know, like, I actually want a question. Like, well, in the likes of radio and the likes of music, this is the first. Like, how do you juggle all? Imagine that. It's a bit crazy. You know, I, I like the fact that people have accepted the fact that Paul the Prince is just multi-talented because nobody gets confused when they see that Paul the Prince is the DJ, or he's the one hosting the Namibian Annual Music Awards, or he's the one on radio. I think I've built it in such a way that um, you're not boxed into one thing. Mm. Yeah, some people get surprised, like, oh, you got music. But then they're like, oh, no, you're good. You know, so you got music and you do TV, that's nice. Oh, you MC. Oh, okay, you got MCing, but I see you DJing and you do that. Yeah, so I'm an MC as well, master of ceremony. But I think I've just shown people that whatever you give me, I just do it to the best of my ability. So. Time management has been a very important thing for me over the years because I started hustling when I was even in university, man. I think that's when I started doing emceeing gigs and singing at, on campus as well. I would get paid at least a small fee to feature at Miss UNAM, University of Namibia. You know, so I learned how to prioritize the most important thing at the time, which is very, very crucial to you being a success because most people get carried away in trying to do everything at once. 
But I feel like if you prioritize and put your energy in one thing that needs to be done right now, and then you go and focus on to the next thing, it makes your schedule more, uh, makes more sense. Yeah, so like today I can give you an example. I was on radio, it finished at seven, and I went to DJ for about an hour, 30 minutes, and I was back home, and now I'm here. So I just, I say yes and say no. It's <laughs> very important to say no if you can't do it. Right. And say yes if you've got a time that you know you can show up for this and show up and do a good job as well. So it's very important to also say no, because I think we, we get carried away in trying to make as much money as possible. But the most thing, the, the, the worst thing you can do for your brand is not be, what I would say, reliable. Yeah. Right. You know, you can't say yes to a gig and then not show up for it. You know, it makes me feel bad. Unless I fall sick, but everything I say yes to, I try and show up for it. So I make sure I make the time for it. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I feel like time management is, is a you know, major key. One of the most important keys that you know, a young entrepreneur like yourself and others are yeah. have to definitely utilize in their life. So now I kind of want to focus on the, you know, on the music aspect a little bit, you know, because, you know, Spotify just came into Africa, you know, yeah. streaming platform. So how is your, you know, production process, you know, different from, you know, the other musicians from, you know, maybe Namibia or, or Zambia? Yeah, um, I think what I like about my music is, uh, I wouldn't say it's because I don't put too much emphasis on it, but it's something I do for fun. It's because I never set out to be a full-time musician because it doesn't really pay. Um, if you're in a place like, you know, whether in Namibia or Zambia, unless you're getting booked for gigs or you're getting mad streams on these platforms. But initially, if you set out to be a musician, it is not, it's not a high-paying gig. Yeah. So my production, mostly when it comes to making songs, I make songs that I like, and then sometimes the audience feels them as well. So I would say almost all the songs that I make is just something that I'll see in the studio. Hey, let's make something like this. But what, the difference in my process, maybe other people are doing it, is because I never actually write songs beforehand. Like, uh, I wouldn't come to you and say, Cat, uh, look, yo, uh, I've got these lyrics. Can you make this beat? I never really do that. Yeah. So you, the beat maker, I would probably contact you and say, look, play me like three, four, five of your beats. And if I like one of your samples or two, three, I'll pick the one I feel the most and write a song there and there in studio. Wow. and go ahead and record it. So I've always recorded like that. It's been only when I started out, we would make beats from scratch and then we write the song. But mostly now, um, I think since 2014, almost 90% of my songs have had beats already from producers and they just bring their flavor. Because I feel like that, for me, it gives the magic of the beat maker or the producer and yours as well. And then you fusion them, it makes it more authentic for me. Like I didn't have to... I didn't have to tell you to change anything. Like, yo, can you please put more kicks? So, unless it's a, a slight adjustment, but mostly I, I like the beat the way it is and I just make maybe minor tweaks and then send it out the way it is. That, yeah. I feel like that, that gives respect to the, the beat maker as well too. Exactly. And I always give credit. I always say produced by Potfa, produced by, you know, Dilly Beats. I've worked with producers from France, mm -hmm. uh, producers from South Africa. I've worked with so many producers, man. Even like when we meet on, on, on Beat Stars, I think that's the name of the app. There's Nigerian people who've made some of my beats as well, you know, so I like that. Even one guy from the UK made one of my biggest records now. His name is Nick, and I made him through my best friend Jasmine, and she was, she was based in the UK at the time. So I think my music has had so much global influence that, you know, you can't really pinpoint it to one location. That's what I like about it. No, that's really yeah. So what do you think is the most fulfilling aspect of, you know, your, your career right now? Uh, the most what? Fulfilling aspect, like... Oh, like, fulfilling? Yeah. Ah, oh, man, I think being able to meet, uh, you know, not just do, okay, let me, stay, let me start by saying the most feeling thing about my career right now is waking up and doing what you love. Not too many people get to do that, man. I feel like most people are stuck in a career just because it's making money or just because, you know, you found yourself there by chance. But I feel like the fulfillment comes in enjoying your work every day. You know, waking up and doing what you love to do and it's not something that you're doing by force unless you're just feeling fatigued. So that's fulfilling for me. And secondly, getting to meet all the global icons. I mean, I've met people like Davido, Trey Songs, Run Town, through various concerts, you know. Like I mentioned earlier, Trevor Noah, Mini Glamini, Lungile. I've met all these people through work as well. You know, so being able to, to, to socialize with global icons as well when they come down to Namibia or if I go down to South Africa, it's something that I never really imagined I'll be doing, but it's something that I do now. So it's really fulfilling to have the global audience know about you and recently also featuring on a South African drama series uh, called The Queen. Oh, it's, wow. it's very popular in Africa, man. And then when I went down there, um, they, you know, my friend introduced me in the respect of Jeremy saying like, he's one of the best entertainers in Namibia. It was fulfilling for me, you know, for someone outside Namibia to say that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, 
people recognize that, oh, okay, you're doing certain work there. You know, and then I had a nice cameo on the show. So it's really fulfilling to say you're doing your best and people are noticing it. It's, it's really nice for me, yeah. That was definitely dope, especially when, you know, people acknowledge the fact, without you asking for, you know, the acknowledgement as well. So. Exactly. You don't go there and say, give me my respect. No, I think respect <laughs> earned. Uh, you don't have to tell people to give you respect. And uh, my friend always tells me, like, you know, you earn these stripes. It's one of the lines we like saying to each other. When you put in the work, the work speaks for itself. And I feel like that's what's happened in my career as well. Yeah. So what's next for your career, Rise? Um, do you have any, like, goals for this upcoming year? Man, you know, people have been pushing me for music for a while now. I've not been so consistent for the past two years or so. I'm really hoping I can finish an EP, at least five songs. If not, I can push it to an album. Because I feel like there's so much music that I've been storing up and so many producers I've been interacting with. Um, so I'm hoping this year I can feature more artists as well, make a nice creative project. And people not to box me just as an R&B artist, because I do Afropop, I do hip hop, you know. So I'm trying to make a nice you know, combined project that can come out this year. And like I said, for the fans, it's not just for the hits. It's yeah. just something that even you in, in America right now can listen to and say, oh, this is good stuff, you know. Exactly. So hopefully uh, I'll get that done before, before or oh, by the mid of the year. Because I've already done like three records so far. Right. I just want to add a few more. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that for sure. I mean, like, uh, yeah. I know you're now on, um, you know, you're, are you available on all streaming platforms? I saw the one yeah. on Deezer, Spotify, Apple Music, everything. I think I've been trying to get, because um, I've got friends who are Zambian and they're based in the States. Mm -hmm. I've got friends who are in Namibia, they're going to Canada. And it's always nice because uh, Instagram has given us an, a global audience, you know. So when you share your music, I got a guy from Portugal as well saying, yo, I heard your new R&B single, you know. So it's given us a global market. So I wouldn't want to box it to a CD and just sell it in Namibia. I've been trying to do digital uh, platform promotion since my first album in 2015. Right. For sure. Yeah, I definitely agree with that as well. Um, how do you want to see the future of Africa and like more of the future in the media, you know, of Africa? Um, I think the future of media in, in, in Africa is, is, is going to be very big because, you know, if you see the way doors have opened up, not just in Hollywood, and for, for people like Nomza Mombata, she started in the new coming to America, you know? Yeah. And I met her here in Namibia as well. I saw her one time, you know, Trevor Noah. He's over there doing the daily show as well. You know, and you've got artists like Burner Boy. He's get mad streams there in, in, in America, across the world. I feel like Africa has finally got its recognition that it's been, um, that it's not been getting for a while. Mm. You know, not just in music, but in so much in fashion. You know, people are doing dance moves from Africa now, even in France, you know. I feel like Africa has got the potential to become the source, not just for the minerals that the people have known it for over the years, because people have been coming, colonizing, getting copper, iron, and diamonds. Now people are getting music as well, man. <laughs> people are getting African beats and making it an American song, you know? Even in the UK, you get people collaborating and not, let me not say stealing, but getting that African style just to appeal to the African nation. So the future is very, very bright for Africa, and I applaud all the artists who are working hard, man, because artists are suffering a lot now in COVID-19. We can't have shows, but the fact that the music is still out there, TikTok is having African songs on their, on their reels and all that, I do really want to applaud all the content creators from Africa. They're doing a fantastic job right now. For sure, and I definitely agree with you, man. I think it's only a matter of time, and obviously it has to be organic, but hopefully yeah. you're still out here, you know, making your music and stuff for Africa. Is, 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 yeah. Yeah, because I, I was talking to, you know, an artist in Ghana two days ago, and one thing we were talking about was the fact that yeah, we have a lot of people in Africa. Nigeria alone has about 200 million people, you know? Imagine that. Yeah. yeah. Imagine, like, for example, like if Burner Boy drops a song and everyone in Nigeria is listening to it, using those streaming platforms, he should be on yeah. both instantly. Like, when you drop a song, you should be on both. You have Namibia supporting you, South Africa, yeah. Kenya, all these people as well. So, I mean, it's only a matter of time. And the last question I have for you is, how can the Voice of Africa, you know, support your causes and you know, potentially collaborate in the future together? Um, I think like I mentioned in the beginning, Voice of Africa is something I've had noticed for like maybe even over 10 years. I think it's a name that is not foreign. You know, when you look at it, it's something that I've always, I've read a few of the articles and stuff. You know, it's a big platform. And to get a call from someone, if I had an email actually, and now we're on a call from someone like you, I really feel humbled because this platform is something that is globally recognized. And, you know, if anything that I feel like the fact that we have a connection now and I know like if something is of importance and I can reach out to you and, mm -hmm. and drop it for me, that's enough for me knowing that 
I've got my African brothers out there on these big platforms who are noticing the work and can help me get it out there so it can get eyes and ears if it's music or eyes if I've got a new TV show that I would want some input from you as well, maybe, you know? Um, so this is a platform that I feel like it's got, uh, it's, it's so strong, you know, and I, I hope it doesn't end. I hope it just becomes bigger than, bigger and better, you know, because the sky is the limit and you guys have been doing the work over the years. It speaks for itself, like I say. If I tell somebody right now that I'm doing an interview with Voice of Africa, they'll be like, how? You know, because they know that this platform is very good. So hopefully I can collaborate with you guys, whatever it is, whether we have some interactive comments, a live stream one day, so we can introduce the Namibian public to Voice of Africa. Sure. Whatever it is, I'm looking forward to how the future is going to look between you and myself. For sure, bro. So yeah, I really appreciate you coming on the platform again. Like I said, you were very busy, guys, so it means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I make time, I make time. <laughs> <laughs>